astronaut is derived from the Greek words for star and sailor. It's commonly applied to those individuals that travel beyond the Earth's atmosphere to space. Now, there's a lot of discussion these days on who is a star sailor, who's eligible for the designation astronaut. Well, I believe the world needs more astronauts, and I'll tell you why. Spaceflight is not just a trip to space. It's a journey that starts well before the rocket motor lights. It's an experience that has the ability to change your perception with life on Earth. I was lucky enough to have that experience this year with three of my crew members aboard Virgin Galactic's Spaceship Two spacecraft. The late Dr. Stephen Hawking said, "We are entering a new space age, and I hope it will bring about a new unity." As he named the spacecraft I rode into space, VSS Unity. The famed astrophysicist and cosmologist held a ticket to go to space before he passed, and strongly believed that the human race has no future if it does not go into space. The world needs more scientists, astronauts, who can use space to solve problems on Earth. Now, Dr. Hawking's words ran through my head that morning of my space flight as I headed to the spaceport where Virgin Galactic operated its hybrid vehicle system. It's a unique feat of engineering that utilizes both air breathing and rocket propulsion to take six people to space and safely back down to Earth. Now, I often get asked if I was nervous that day, and I wasn't nervous. I was filled with a sense of anticipation and excitement as I entered the vehicle and took my seat. And that anticipation and excitement just continued to build. And by the way. Unlike a commercial airline seat, in our vehicle, every seat is a window seat. <laughs> so we began to taxi and then started to accelerate down the runway, and we passed the hangar where my friends and family cheered. I remember waving to them, even though they couldn't see me. And with takeoff, we were on our way to 45,000 feet. During the climb, I talked with my crewmates, and we started working on our flight tasks. We were there to do a job. We were evaluating our cabin and the experience for our future astronauts. Now, while I was mentally going through what I had to do in space, I still so took some time to reflect. How did I get here, and how did we get here? There have been 598 people that have gone to space. 598 in the existence of our humanity. Only 598 people have seen the Earth from space, and of those, 72 were women, 16 African American, 13 Hispanic, four were Indian, and one of those Indians was me. <laughs> I've wanted to go to space since I was young. I've wanted to adventure out into the unknown as the captain of my own starship and follow in the footsteps of those that explored the stars before me. But it often felt like I was just chasing a dream, until I discovered Dr. Kalpana Chawla, an incredible engineer and the first woman of Indian origin to become an astronaut. Seeing someone that looked like me doing what I wanted to do. Help me turn my dream into a plan, and that day space felt just a little bit closer. The world needs more diverse astronauts who can help inspire more diverse astronauts. So, returning to my spaceflight journey, we left off with me and my crew in our spaceship, waiting to be released from mothership and begin our first begin our ascent to space. Release, release, release. As the rocket motor burned, I saw the sky turn from blue to purple to black. I was pushed into my seat as the roar of the rocket motor took over my thoughts. As an aerospace engineer, I couldn't help but smile as I felt the power of the rocket motor propel me to space. And after 60 seconds, the rocket motor cuts off, and then silence. And this incredible. View of our planet.
You see that thin blue line? Many astronauts have experienced the overview effect, that cognitive shift in awareness when they see that thin blue line of our atmosphere and how fragile our planet really is. When they see the globe with no borders, they realize how divided we've actually become. And when we see our planet surrounded by seemingly vast black emptiness, we take note of how small yet significant we feel. It's almost like a call to action while you're floating there in the silence of space. The world needs more humanitarian astronauts with the power to unite for a cause bigger than themselves. So as I glided back down to Earth, I couldn't help but think, who's going to be sitting in the seat after me? I don't know, it could be anyone. And then it hit me. It could be anyone, and that's incredible. Virgin Galactic isn't the only company sending people to space. Shortly after my flight, Blue Origin sent four people to space, including the youngest and the oldest astronaut at the time, the latter being Wally Funk. For those of you who don't know who Wally Funk is, Wally is 82, and Wally is a trailblazer that was selected as part of the Mercury 13 program in 1959, a group of women that underwent the same physiological and psychological tests as the NASA astronauts, and they passed. But none of them went to space because at the time, women were not allowed to be NASA astronauts. But on this day, Wally achieved her spaceflight journey and became an astronaut. <laughs> the world needs more trailblazing astronauts who can reduce barriers and allow others to create their own path. Now, let's address the giant asteroid in the room that space is a billionaire's playground. Many private spaceflight companies have been started by Earth billionaires, but with the aim to make space more accessible for all and expand the Earth's economic sphere outward. Launch prices are still high, but with increased number of flights and technology advancements, the hope is that price will come down over time. So why are they spending their money in space when there are problems here on Earth? Well, spaceflight could help address those problems here on Earth and make progress in new ways and from different perspectives. And progress creates opportunities. Spaceflight has and can open the door to new science, research, technology advancements, and even help our education and outreach initiatives. Space capabilities have already allowed people with the ease to go about their everyday lives, with the ability to effectively communicate, know where to go, and even how to dress for the weather. These assets are critical for, for understanding what's, what's out there in the universe, and also what's happening on our own planet. These assets are monitoring climate change, as well as predicting and aiding response to the increased natural disasters as a result. And on a more personal scale, space capabilities have also affected the diverse life of humans on Earth. Heart transplants have been aided by rocket scientists simulating the fluid flow through rocket engines. A nanofiber filter devised to purify water on orbit is providing water to remote villages on Earth. On an even more, even more personal note, consumer products have also been a product of space investment. If you have a high-shedding dog like me, you probably use a cordless dust buster every once in a while. That product actually has ties to our space program, dating all the way back to Apollo. The world needs more entrepreneurial astronauts who can innovate on and off planet. Astronauts are envoys of hope, curiosity, and progress. The more that have the opportunity to have that experience and return to their diverse communities, the bigger impact it'll have on our next generation of dreamers and the care for our home planet and the people that inhabit it. Spaceflight is not just for pilots and engineers anymore. It's for writers, communicators, artists, politicians, anybody that wants to embark on the journey. And perhaps those future astronauts' call to action may just happen when they're in space, looking down on our planet in all of its brilliance and all of its vulnerability. 
space is for everyone, and the world needs more astronauts. Thank you.